I wish there was a way to then you know, go and test dopamine neurotransmission other than urine, which I don't really think is very accurate. I'm not sure if biopsy. you know that. <laughs> a, a biopsy. Oh yeah. It's just like insert a needle into your brain. <laughs> Straight through your, through your nose. In there. Uh-huh. Let's see, Take let's a little see sample. Have, see what's going we'll on. See, we'll see if you have dopamine. You, you never dabbled with 9-MEBC before. No. No, it was on the to-do list, uh, yeah. but dopaminergic, I'm, I'm pretty good. So please fill us in, man. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, but you have taken cerebral lysin, right? Yeah. 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 And what, by the way, what was your cycle that? Do you remember, like, how much you were dosing? I'm sure you were dosing it. Yeah, five, five milliliters per day. Uh, I'm going to start okay. another cycle of cerebral lysin at one point, uh, but wow. I have to order it. So, yeah, yeah five milliliters uh, intramuscular before bed and then 10 milliliters on leg day. Man, it was fucking bliss. Yeah, wow. And so you didn't have any brain fog at all? Because that sometimes happens with higher doses of cerebral lysin. No, I, yeah. So I did notice brain fog, but that's why I would take it before bed. So I would mm. take it before bed. It was one of the best ergogenic sleep aids that I ever got. I woke up mm. like, like uh, when you're on holiday, you know, you wake up after a couple of days, you're like super relaxed. You wake up and you just feel super nice. And it was wow. after a single shot of 10 milliliters. I got that for right. an entire month straight. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Beautiful yeah. thing. I mean, do you think there are any long, longer term gains still from that? that you notice um or what? no not anymore because of course i did samax and selenc for about a month okay and then i want to enhance my neurogenesis so i went to cerebral lysin for a month mm -hmm. and then i went on fluvoxamine which i just started again um right. Interesting. and that's just continuous neurogenesis right. i might try right. vortioxetine because it seems to be uh, potentiates more neurogenesis and actually has cognitive enhancing benefits okay interesting um but i still have so much fluvoxamine and i don't like to I don't know. I still need to do more research on fortioxetine because I yeah. did read some case reports where people had like terrible side effects. So uh, smart, um, smart. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. So that's, that's basically the neurogenesis, but the last year I haven't touched anything because fertility, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't like, you can't mess with that. Yeah. So uh, like I, I have run multiple cycles of nine MEBC and mm -hmm. basically what this compound is, is it is a Parkinson's drug that and it had, God, it's got like four really, really long, exhaustive uh, preliminary or pr primary papers on it that was studied to alleviate um, Parkinson's symptoms by way of restoring the dopaminergic system right. and restoring dopamine transmission. It Dopamine is so complicated that like it, it's it. There's a lot of things that contribute to dopamine functioning well. One of them is the you know the synthesis or the conversion of like your dietary tyrosine, which is like the amino acid everybody knows as the building block mm -hmm. for dopamine, into L-dopa and then L-dopa into actual dopamine. There's two different enzymes that control that. 9-MEBC upregulates one of those enzymes. It's called tyrosine hydroxylase. So it'll make you make more L-dopa, which will convert mm -hmm. to dopamine, from L-tyrosine via upregulating tyrosine hydroxylase. Now, the other thing that it does which probably differentiates it from like things like bromantine, which also work on tyrosine hydroxylase, is it enhances this thing called uh, dopamine differentiation, right? Or dopamine neuronal differentiation, which is like if, if you think about uh, a dopamine neuron in its infancy, it mm -hmm. then grows and kind of matures and extends out from its base neurites and neurites are just a, a catch-all phrase for axons and dendrites these are the branches between neurons that neurons use to communicate with other neurons and so like this 90 bbc stuff it, it makes you build more dopamine neurons and then matures those dopamine neurons to have axons and dendrites to communicate with the rest of your brain oh. and to optimize it's like region specific optimization whether it's the the uh, nigral striatal pathway or various areas of the limbic system, or it's hypothalamus dopamine, it increases the quantity of dopamine in all these areas. So it's like, in addition to that, though, talking about like cerebral lysin and neurogenesis, it also upregulates neurotrophic factors like BDNF. And uh, okay. I think the other one is a glial cell uh, line derived neurotrophic factor. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this fuck, this shit, I mean, it, it, it's, it's multifaceted in what it's able to do. I'm on, I think, day. 12 of a cycle of 20 milligrams a day. So I dosed it this morning at 20 milligrams, been doing it for the last 12, uh, 12 days or so. My experience kind of mirrors all the other times that I cycled it first two or three days. Absolute euphoria, right? 
Uh, yeah. More dopamine than usual. Uh, it's a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, so it's keeping other neurotransmitters elevated because it's just yeah, preventing. So it's, yeah, right. So serotonin levels are also a little bit increased, probably. Right. I mean, who mm. knows? Like acetylcholine potentially too. GABA maybe. Yeah. It mm. just it just keeping neurotransmitters. So you feel really really euphoric. That dies down for a couple of days thereafter. Usually doesn't come back, or it could because it did for me at like day six or seven. But like since then. I'm on day 12 now. It's like every day I'm just more excited. I, I'm more motivated. My brain works a little better. Like I generally mm -hmm. just feel fucking more interested in shit. And so I'm going to give it until uh, day 20. Mm -hmm. it, the literature on this is like, you know, you really don't get the positive effects on upregulating the dopamine conversion enzymes and inducing all this uh, dopamine neuron differentiation until day 10. So you've got to take it for at least 10 days plus. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, dose runs the gamut. I mean, my suggestion, if people are looking to try, it'd be like between 10 on the very low end to 50 milligrams on the very high end a day for right. 20 to 30 days and kind of see how you fare. I wish there was a way to then, you know, go and test like dopamine neurotransmission other than urine, which I don't really think is very accurate. Mm -hmm. Not sure. If Biopsy. You <laughs> a, a biopsy oh yeah it's just like insert a needle into your brain <laughs> straight through your through your nose in there uh-huh see, 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 we'll, see what's going we'll, on we'll see if you have dopamine you know? yeah yeah so like um but i can tell just like again everything that you know, dopamine is implicated in motivation reward like i may mm. be a little bit more impulsive while i'm on 9 mbc and that's in how's your libido dopamine. though that, great I mean, honestly great yeah i mean okay. it, it's as long as everything else is correct, like, and you work on dopamine, it just gets better, you know? Mm -hmm. But if, if, if other things are not correct and you're working on dopamine, it may help a little bit, but it just, it's not, it's so complicated, right? I mean, testosterone, you know, is working on the dopaminergic pathways to, to help libido, um, and estradiol and fucking aromatase. It's, it's so complicated, but definitely everything that's related to dopamine is improved with taking this stuff. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So how the, yeah. how does it compare to other dopaminergic aids? Like, you know, dihexa, nopeps, and some of these nootropics all have a little bit of an overlapping effect in some of the neurotransmitters. Right. And uh, of course, you've you've tried all of those as well. So, yep. like, which one is the best for motivation now? What is the final verdict? I would definitely say that 9-MBC is in a class of its own. Yeah, it, okay. it is in a league of its own that is like at least 30% better than the best dopaminergics out there. Okay. And like, you know, the 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 other comparable or even somewhat comparable dopaminergics would be modafinil because you got some mm. uh, DAT inhibition. So you have a little more uh, synaptically available dopamine. So, you know, pretty good. Adderall, obviously somewhat of a similar mechanism um, to modafinil regarding inhibition of the dopamine transporter and thus more, you know, biologically available or synaptically available dopamine, but they can only really get you to a certain point and they're not working on dopamine projection, like right. from the origination points and they're not optimizing conversion. They're just keeping dopamine around. Whereas 9MBC is working on the whole system. Right. So it, it is much better than anything I've ever taken bar mm. none for dopamine. All right, there you go. I know yeah. a lot of people have good results with 9 MBC, uh, MEBC after anhedonia from, yes. from um, let's say, BPC-157. That's a common occurrence with some people, mm. uh, which is a shame because uh, BPC-157 is such a popular compound, but some guys yeah. get an adverse reaction. I wonder so what the mechanism is for that. Yeah, so when you look at the acmatine sulfate, which has some overlapping effects, or, or 9 MEBC, a lot of people get good results, and they kind of, after a, a small cycle, they kind of overcome those issues. Sure. I mean, I think that's yeah. one of the main things it can be used for. It could be used to alleviate sexual symptoms that like you cannot pin to testosterone levels or estradiol levels right. or anything else. Um, and, and perhaps it's dopamine. I mean, look, you can absolutely have a lack of dopamine firing where it matters, which is the limbic system and the hypothalamus. Mm -hmm. That that mm -hmm. that shit can get down regulated and deranged. Like Kratom's a great way to do it, or, or you know, any yeah. antipsychotic drug that blocks the dopamine D2 receptor will absolutely do that. So that system can go awry, you know, and, and resolving it, you know, or getting to the bottom of what the neuronal underpinnings are of what's misfiring can change mm -hmm. your life. Like, you know, you know, like yeah, these people with an an anhedonia, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it could be serotonin mediated to some extent, uh, but almost definitely anhedonia is dopamine mediated. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I see that once in a while, of course, people complain. Well, I made that BBC with five, seven deep dive did pretty well, got a lot of views. Yeah. So once in a while, you see those comments pop up. Yeah, give me terrible anhedonia. So I already right. included that in the video. I said, look into nine MEBC. But I, at that time, I didn't know what the protocols were. So hopefully those guys stuck around and are watching your explanation of it. Uh, I might have to put it in an order later tonight. Yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's honestly something else. You, you want to... With a nootropic or a nootropic gas chemical, or especially something you know that's going to upregulate anything like a sp neurogenesis or or, or uh, the dopaminergic system, you want to feel it, and you actually want to notice that it's doing something. Yeah. On day one, dude, you will probably notice it. Like on day one, you'd be like, "Wait a minute, man, I'm a little chipper. Like I'm kind of, yeah. like, you know, you'd be in a did good you, mood." Did you ever? Did you ever try Tesla fencing? Uh, no, but I know that that elevates a bunch of neurotransmitters, does it not? Yeah, so it's a selective norepinephrine, dopamine, and right. serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Right. Man, that feels like, I know, a combination of, of microdosing LSD and MDMA the first day. Interesting. You're like, who? I cannot record today. Everybody will know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's well, basically dude. an appetite suppressants because, you know, uh, SNDRIs, like Wellbutrin, for example, have as yeah. a side effect because all those neurotransmitters are so upregulated that they, yep. uh, they, they blo uh, blunt appetite. So tesofensine and, and uh, terzepidide or semaglutide, deluglutide, very expensive appetite suppressants. So that's why mm -hmm. I reviewed both of them. So people can have a little bit of an insight on what's going on. Oh, you so did, did you notice any, did you notice any appetite suppression of, of nine MABC? No, no, okay. uh, not really. I mean, my appetite is, it's generally very, very stable, meaning it doesn't fluctuate one way or the other because mm -hmm. I'm as regimented as possible. And I, frankly, I'm not telling people to even be that way because my life is very boring, dude. Right? The same thing for breakfast. Same here, man. Same you know, here. it's just, it's just, you know. That's but, what it takes but, to be successful, dude. Same shit every day. And then at the end of the month, you do your financials and you're like, okay. This was a good month. <laughs> this worked out. Yeah. It made yeah, sense to out. eat the, you know, the, the same thing every yeah, day. Yeah. It made and sense to, to tell everybody to fuck off when they add me to dinner. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, man. I love it. 